Hi, welcome to Chamber Chats. I'm Bruce Williams. I'm the CEO of the Greater Victoria Chamber of Commerce. And I would like to begin, as always, by acknowledging that I live and work in the ancestral traditional territories of the Lekwungen speaking Coast Salish nations, in particular, the Songhees and the Esquimalt. And we live and work alongside them every day, and that's our privilege and pleasure to do so. Chamber Chats is made possible by support from Island Savings, a division of First West Credit Union, and C SPAN Victoria Shipyards. And as always, we're coming to you from the podcasting studios at Czech Television. Every day in your life, you encounter somebody who went to post-secondary. You know, whether you really put those pieces together or not, the dentist, the person who fixes your car, cuts your hair, teaches your kids, have all gone through post-secondary. And post-secondary itself has gone through a tremendous amount of change as we've all adapted to the pandemic. We're getting a regular update today with Dr. Kevin Hall, who's the President and Vice Chancellor at the University of Victoria. Welcome back. Nice to see you again. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks. Great to be back for the quarterly chats, and I really appreciate the opportunity to connect with the business community. And thanks for the uh, acknowledgement to land and language as well. I think that's really important we do that, and uh, I would like to pay my respects to elders past and present and really commit to trying to uh, look at how we decolonize our institution in a way that's meaningful for our local Indigenous populations and, and how we can sort of embrace the framework, I guess, that we have with the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples to work towards self-determination. And I know the university and the business community are really committed to working hard on this. Yes, and we certainly are as a chamber, that's for sure. You had an interesting uh, ceremony last week, very respectful, where you actually asked permission of the nations to be where you are with UVic. Tell me about that. Yeah, this was part of what we do in Canada, which is to do this thing called installing a president. It's typically done at a graduation ceremony with a lot of pomp and circumstance. Um, But I really wasn't interested in doing that. I really wanted to show a commitment to the institution to start to work towards decolonization. And I thought, well, why not start with the highest office at the university? Um, It was something I felt very strongly about coming here uh, to back to Canada from where I was living in Australia. That um, when I came here, I wanted to make sure. I sought out permission to live and work on the lands. And so I spent a bit of time organizing it because of COVID and various things, but it was really important for me to request to uh, to the Songhees and Esquimalt uh, people in particular that I get permission to, uh, to live and work on the land. The interesting piece for me was, of course, we, we did that, but, but the other piece was the installation. So we broke tradition. We did not do the you know, traditional pomp and circumstance uh, installation of the president. We did it in uh, uh, using Coast Salish uh, protocol. It was really uh, absolutely humbling and um, uh, heartwarming and educational for me at the same time. And I just thought it was really respectful to our local indigenous population that that we just really show that uh, respect to the uh, local First Nations. So the transition back into classes uh, as of September was not probably as smooth as anyone had hoped that it was going to be because there were still some bumps along the way. Uh, but students, faculty, staff have all kind of made their way back in some form into the institution. So tell me how that's been. Yeah, well, look, I, I would say it's been almost like a dream. Of course, it, it isn't without its troubles and issues, but it's ran as smoothly as we could absolutely have hoped for it to, to run. And that was part and parcel due to the really good planning that went on to get our students back on campus. Um, you know, it, it, it's been a summer of planning for this. Um, it's been working with the Ministry of Education, with the Public Health Office, to make sure we do it in the right way. And certainly um, the students I've talked to, all of them are absolutely thrilled to be back on campus to recognize that, um, you know, campus gives you something in addition to your classes, that university experience, which is really important to you. Um, you know, we, we, we're we back to our regular mode of delivering education in about 90% of our classes. In some cases, we're still offering some online classes. We've got international students to worry about, but we've really been promoting a vaccination, uh, using masks uh, wherever we are. Um, we're really looking at, um, you know, promoting good hygiene, daily health checks, et cetera. And the province has helped us out, of course, with, with some of the parts of, of the educational experience that are really um, non-essential. So things like living in residence, participating in sports, et cetera. Then we're following you know, the BC government's um, proof of vaccination protocol using the app. Um, we've had vaccination clinics on our campus to make sure we get our, our students um, vaccinated and our staff and faculty. And I think a great thing has been um, development of an app that the other universities in BC have also participated in, which gives us a pulse of our campus. We've had uh, over 25,000 people in our community uh, fill out this uh, self-declaration 
that is, you know, close to 90% of our students and staff, and we're still working on the, on the remainder of them. But that's showing us that 98.5% of us are actually vaccinated. Um, we're just going through the follow-ups now to make sure that people were, you know, being honest in their self-attestation, which we have no reason to assume they're not. But it means we've come back as a highly vaccinated population as well. And so we have not seen outbreaks of, um, of COVID. Um, we have not had to panic around students wearing masks. They've all been well behaved. They've all been masked in their classrooms. And so it really has been a fantastic return to campus with, with an excitement um, around a university that a university should have this time of year when we're all coming back. And I think it really has helped um, the educational experience for, for our students. You've really created a bit of a fashion statement with the UVic masks as well. They're a very sleek navy blue with the printing on the side. That's kind of a nice addition. It fits in with everybody. But we wanted to talk to today about um, the element of a university or a college being an economic driver. Uh, you mentioned international students who, of course, in addition to being an educational element and the skills that they can uh, acquire and use within an economy, they bring a lot of money. They represent a certain amount of money because they spend money when they get here. So that's that's pretty significant, isn't it? Yeah, look, it, I think it is the money, of course, and that, that really helps to stimulate some of the local businesses, for example. They also bring a great workforce. I mean, there's a lot of international students who go out and work in the restaurants and the bars and uh, the stores and shops in town, which is fantastic. And, and I think the other piece um, that's always good to see in a city like Victoria is the diversity that gets brought in by our international students to, to make sure this city um, is really at the forefront of, of human rights and equity, diversity, inclusivity. and and having that constant reminder on our doorstep is, is a really important thing. And, you know, it's been uh, kind of a mixed blessing with our international students. So, you know, Canadian government is trying, but hasn't been the quickest in issuing things like uh, work study visas uh, or study visas. Um, and there's been troubles getting some students from different countries back into uh, to Canada with the ban on flights, of course, from India, which has now just been dropped. So it's been a it's been a lot of work to from our from our team here to try to get our students back and I would say you know we've got probably around 2500 students back on campus we still have another uh, 2500 or so that we're anticipating arriving at some point during this semester and and when we're back to full strength we've got about 6000 international students at UVic which as you say is a significant uh, population to to have in Victoria um, supporting business or working for business and and uh, it, it just really creates a, a, a great atmosphere. Yeah, there is, uh, if I'm trying to remember a number, I think each student represents something like $40,000 a year uh, into the economy. That's what they bring. But as you mentioned, they're also workforce because the, the businesses that are crying out for support right now are hospitality, tourism, retail, and everywhere pretty much. But we're going to talk today a little bit more about the impact that post-secondaries, in particular UVic, will play in our economic recovery uh, post-pandemic. Our chamber chat today is with Dr. Kevin Hall, who is the uh, president and vice chancellor of UVic. So let's talk about that. The economic recovery is moving along, but post-secondaries have a pivotal role in that, a huge role in that. Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, thanks, Bruce, for that. And I think, you know, first of all, as a university, we can't forget our role in the community. We're here to be the university for this region. That means, you know, that comes with... Um, you know, a, a commitment for us to make this a better community to live in. And whether that is actually driving the economy, it's uh, making social change or it's creating environmental change. We really take that seriously, our role in the community. In terms of, you know, looking specifically at economics, we've got everything from the development of talent. So we're, we're if you like, creating the future workforce for the businesses that are thriving and the businesses that are emerging in this region, uh, both at a you know classic undergraduate level or at a, an advanced research level for companies that need that. So it is about creating talent and, and we need to make sure we're in step with the community in terms of what talent does the community need to be successful. So we try to do that. I think the other piece that we can have an impact in is in the research and innovation enterprise. And, and certainly, you know, we have a, a workforce of almost a thousand academics and, and 2000 support staff who are solving some of the world's big problems around climate change, around um, medical technologies, around availability to healthcare, social medicine, uh, the environment, you, you name it. We're, we've got people trying to solve some of these big problems and that's creating knowledge and knowledge is the basis of, of driving a new business forward, uh, you know, creating a better business, 
And no matter what business you're in, you can, you can take advantage of some of the research that goes on. So that's an, another big piece for, of what we're doing. And I think finally, um, you know, I like to think of the university as a connector as well. And so we have a lot of partners in industry and business um, across the region. And quite often we might be the introduction service that connects business to business, for example. Uh, it doesn't always have to be about the university. And so we like to use our network. We like to use our alumni um, who we know are out in the community, you know, operating and owning businesses and, and uh, you know, driving the economy that way. We like to connect our, our alumni, business to business, the university. So we've got that role to play, I guess, as a almost a dating service within the region, right? Yeah, that's part of the, what the, the chamber does too, which is why we align so well with UVic. We did one of these chamber chats a short time ago with uh, TELUS, who along with UVic is a chamber champion in our chamber, talking about the, the digital transformation, how that drives innovation uh, and technology becoming increasingly more important when it was laid right in front of us through things like these Zoom calls and, and, and yeah. the use of technology and the 5G network that's coming forward. How is all that going to align with UVic and how can you lead the way with that? Yeah, well, like I think uh, as a society, uh, we just can't ignore the um, the power, I guess, of data, the power of uh, data analytics or digital uh, digital economy. It's going to permeate everything we do in the future, and so we certainly um, accommodate the region by a developing that talent pool, right, with the latest and greatest in in, in data and digital transformation. Uh, I think there's all kinds of industries we haven't even thought of that are going to be developed in the next 10 years around uh, the digital economy uh, data itself. And, um, you know, we're trying to show some leadership in that, saying where will data be used? We're trying to develop the talent pool in those areas. We're trying to make sure our partners in the community know, know where these opportunities may arise. We're trying to connect uh, globally um, into those digital economies, um, you know, in uh, October the 20th. Uh, myself, the uh, the dean of engineering here, and one of the one of our colleagues in engineering are delivering a digital economy perspective from Canada to an international um, innovation entrepreneurship workshop out of Tsinghua, China. That's going to be attended by a thousand people, trying to really position this region as a place to come and do business uh, where digital economy, you know, is being used. And so it is a it's going to be an important part of our future, absolutely. And you know, it's one of those things that's changing every uh, every month, every two months, you get a new use or a new way of collecting data or using data, a new use of creating these digital platforms. And, and so my hope is, you know, working with our local business community will help identify what, what their needs are and see where we can play that role in, in, in sort of backfilling either knowledge or talent or or doing research to see where this fits in your, into your business. Great way again that the chamber and UVic can work together. You referred earlier too about the uh, the creation of workforce that aligns with the needs that are in place in the economy. Um, when it comes to determining curriculum and what's the effectiveness and what uh, effectiveness rather of what's in place now and what might need to transform, tell me about that process. How you determine what will change and what will be the same, what stays and what goes. Yeah, I, I think Bruce, this is again where we have to listen to um, to the to the demands and the needs and, and the requirements of our, our local workforce and our provincial workforce. So we try to keep our, our pulse on that, and so does the Ministry of Education. You know, they've just offered up two thousand new tech seats, recognizing the importance of technology in the future economy of this province. So we try to position ourselves to take advantage of some of that funding that comes through. Um, but I think, you know, another great um, way of collecting data for us is through our um, experiential learning and co-op programs. You know, most people don't realize UVic is the second largest co-op uh, program provider in, in the country. Waterloo, everybody defaults to Waterloo as the co-op university. Uh, but we actually, uh, you know, rub shoulders and, 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 and do just as much as, as Waterloo is doing. This allows us to have students going out to work with local industries and businesses. Those students go out and they work, they get critiqued, they get feedback on their skills. So we get feedback from our industry partners saying, hey, you know, we want a student to do X, Y, or Z. That gets us thinking about what we want to do with our programs and where we should be heading to be, to be current, I guess, if you like, and to really look at, at what uh, is going on in our workforce. And a couple of areas that we're really you know, focusing on right now is in the technology, the engineering school, the science uh, the computer science school, but also in health. And, and health is something that permeates all of our faculties. It's not just about medicine. It's about the healthcare system. So everything from, you know, economics to uh, logistics and planning uh, to the arts and humanities gets involved in our health initiatives. 
And I guess it is working, you know, closely with our partners and trying to identify, you know, what are your needs for the future? What, what are your needs for the for the talent pool? And what are your needs for problem solving, uh, research, uh, and innovation? So, you know, trying to trying to keep our ear close to the ground. And so we do review curriculum on a very frequent basis. And uh, our faculties are continually um, coming up with programs they think may be suitable in, in today's workforce. Yeah, we can certainly vouch for the value of the co-op program, which you and I have talked about in the past. But at the chamber right now, I have three employees with us who have a connection to the co-op. The current co-op student is a UVic student. One of the past UVic co-op students is with us on staff. And a former Camosun co-op student is yeah. with us uh, at the chamber staff right now. So next, I want to talk about the relationship between the other post-secondaries in the region. We're talking today with Dr. Kevin Hall, who is the president and vice chancellor of UVic. And as I was saying a couple of minutes ago at the chamber, we have had co-op students for both Camosun and UVic come through, and some are still with us at the chamber. But let's talk about how you work together, for example, with Camosun on things, because you're not two separate camps. One's a college and one's a university, but you work together, right, all the time. Look, we do, and if, I, if there was one word to sum it up, it's a dream. <laughs> yeah. I, I, look, I can honestly say I haven't worked at five uh, universities in five different cities. The relationship we have here with uh, Camosun and Royal Roads is very, very unique. Um, we do a lot of college transfer, for example, and so we have uh, a thousand plus students a year taking college uh, programs that are transferring into programs at UVic, and that happens a lot in, in the engineering and sciences. It happens across education. And that's been a great relationship that's been in place for a long time. And I was actually just at Camosun uh, before, before our call. And uh, with the president of Camosun, Sherry Bell and I, we're looking at additional opportunities for us to, uh, to partner together. Um, we talked about the concept of having a Camosun presence on our campus at UVic and the presence of UVic on a Camosun campus. And that we, we're gonna work towards doing that. We're working on the West Shore with, um, with Royal Roads and Camosun. Uh, and UVic to try to look at uh, programs to increase the uh, participation rates in higher education, which are typically uh, you know five to ten points lower than they are over here on on, on this side of the uh, of the bay. Um, so that's a really important initiative. We're looking also at a joint uh, three-way partnership uh, in Langford to develop innovation and entrepreneurship training, so that uh, Langford looks at building a, a future economy based on a knowledge-based workforce, perhaps right in Langford. And so there's lots of things that are going on uh, between the universities, uh, Royal Roads and UVic and, and Camosun that you just don't see elsewhere um, in this province or elsewhere in this, in this country. And I, I think it's a great testament to the leaders that we've had at these institutions in the past that they've recognized the importance of really getting together and working, uh, you know, working closely together. When you talk about outreach to the general business community, as we spoke about earlier, um, you know, climate change is real. It's happening. It's a huge priority for people in this region. And you have researchers at UVic that are working with private entities in this region to address that problem and address the solutions for that. Can we talk about that for a minute? Yeah, we're, we're, we're um, you know, uh, I would say we're probably, well, the top in Canada in terms of sustainability research. Let, let me just blow our own horn. And I say that coming here and being here 11 months now, and I actually, I actually truly, I truly believe it because, you know, there's a commitment here to, uh, to climate action and climate action includes, um, you know, looking at methods for mitigating climate. So we can't deny climate change is occurring. We can't stop it instantly. We, we have to work to, to start to reverse it. But, you know, just an example, we've got um, some of our engineering working with a company called uh, Rainhouse Canada. And they're looking at the um, expansion of their business into um, electric vehicle and stationary storage, energy storage markets. And so our researchers are working uh, on a project funded by the BC government to try to look at making BC one of these leaders in, in energy storage, for example, which is really critical. Um, we've got a group of civil engineers working with a consortium of 37 local buildings to try to look at how are we going to incorporate the latest technology to make these buildings greener, uh, more sustainable and less energy using, uh, using. And, you know, the examples could just go on and on and on. And I think it is one of the uh, hallmarks of UVic is the research into uh, climate action. And, um, you know, we, again, we can't do that in isolation. We have to be doing that, solving the problems of, of your members of the chamber, 
members that have got day-to-day businesses and they're looking for a way to do it in a more sustainable manner, a way that uses less energy, a way that, uh, you know, embraces some of the new uh, technology that may arise out of some of this research. And so I think it's a great, um, it's a great piece of UVic and it's one of our, our, I guess our priority areas for engagement with our local industries and business. Yeah, I mean, the ring road around UVic is not a moat. It's not something that isolates <laughs> the university from the rest of the region, right? That, well, that, I'll tell you what, it's been called a moat by some people that I've talked to, but we're really trying to dispel that to dispel that rumor. And, you know, for years, there has been a lot of engagement going on, let's say on an individual basis, for a researcher to a company or, you know, department to a company. But we really want to make sure the university puts its, its whole effort to behind this initiative just to say you know we're we're here for you we're here for the community and let us know how we can we can roll up our sleeves and pitch in and help out and that's you know whether it's a to help economic prosperity for our businesses or whether it's to deal with some of these big issues around addiction and homelessness and things that really affect us all as people that live in the city and just to wrap it up here, when we talk about, again, creating workforce and things that align with the needs of the business community, uh, you and I and many others were at a ceremony on a beautiful sunny day at the Engineering and Computer Science Building, where an expansion was announced there to, again, create that cohort of, cohort of workers that are needed. That's a very exciting project. It, it is exciting. And it's one thing, uh, you know, hats off to the Ministry of Education, Mass Education, in recognition that uh, technology seats at university need to be expanded because a lot of our economy is going to use uh, technology. And that doesn't mean there's not value in anything else. In fact, technology applications in fine arts are something that we're actually leading, uh, leading the country. And we're looking at being, you know, five to 10 years away from producing our first graduates through this new and these new enhanced programs. They'll be a great addition to, to the local workforce. So as you go about your day-to-day business anywhere across this region and you encounter people, consider how many of them have taken post-secondary training to do what they do to help you, your family, your kids, your neighbors, your business, all of those people. That's why the post-secondaries matter so much around here. And if you want to have some fun, go to the website at uvic.ca and poke around in there and see exactly what they do there. Dr. Kevin Hall, President and Vice Chancellor of UVic, always, UVic rather, always a pleasure. We will catch up again in a few months. Uh, Thanks, Bruce. I look forward to our next chat. Thanks. And that's Chamber Chat. We'll see you for the next one.